Hello again, this is Kirk Nelson with Brilliant Twisted Skulls. Uh, in this installment of Chainmail Tips, Tricks, and Ring Flips, we'll be discussing plier modifications for chainmail weaving pliers. Um, check the description below you'll, for the links, uh, supplies, and tools we use in this video. And let's get to it. Let's start talking about plier modification. As you can see in that first video, i show you a couple of the modifications. So what I'm working with here, I'll start out with, these are Zeron pliers. They're um, model 483. And every single one of these is a 483. That's usually what I buy, and then I'll modify them myself. Now, Zeron has some great already modified pliers. They make a set specifically for chainmail. But I personally prefer to modify my own, so that's what I do. Um, you can modify these pliers in a number of different ways. But, um, but first I'd like to talk about the value of modifying your own pliers. So keep in mind, if, uh, if you buy a set of pliers and you don't have a grinding wheel, um, you can't really modify your own pliers. So when they get kind of buggered up in the on the ends here, you can kind of see this one's already, already starting to kind of get a little chewed up a little bit. That's hard one to see. But I got another one here that every time you slip on a ring, it kind of, you can see, see how that, oops. See how that kind of twists and 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 deforms the end of the tip there? And every time you slip on a ring or you miss twist it or just from working, um, you know, ultimately what happens is these uh, plier ends will start to deform and they'll start to, you know, check and and get some of these deformations on the tip. And the more that happens, the, the more trouble you have actually weaving. The more ring slips, the more slips you're going to get. Because those those ends deform and then all of a sudden you, you aren't able to hold the rings and they have a higher propensity to actually slip out, deforming the tips even more. So, what I do is then, uh, well, and let me step back for a second. Um, if you can't modify these pliers, then you're, then you're looking at buying another set. And this happens fairly frequently. I mean, I usually go, I usually end up going through, um, my half dozen, dozen or so, uh, maybe a dozen plus sets of these pliers. Um, usually about once a week. Uh, just to tune them up, clean them up, and get them so that they're looking good and, and weaving really well. Um, sometimes a little bit more often. On the heavier ones, so like this one you can see that I've brought that down to a real nice chisel point. I use this for anything uh, be below 20 AWG. Um, so the smaller gauged wire. Um, these are really good for. And, oops, there we go. Um... And uh, and so these have a tendency, because they're so thin at the tip, um, you know, so you can get into those tight little spots, they have a tendency to warp and, and uh, become deformed a little easier than, say, this pair, <clears throat> which I use for rings in the 18, 19, up to, uh, you know, 14 or even 12 SWG. And yeah, these... These um, Zerons are capable of doing really pretty pretty heavy duty rings uh, if you modify the pliers a little bit. So I'll show you what we do to modify those. Um, but again, I want to stress the importance of being able to um, being able to modify these yourself. So and all that takes is a, a grinding wheel. And I got this little grinding wheel for about 50 bucks. I think it was 50, maybe $60 uh, from Harbor Freight. And um, 
you know, any, it's like, it's a three inch bench grinding wheel. Um, I think it's 80 grit, maybe, I think it's 80 grit, um, grinding wheel. And, uh, so I paid $60 for this grinding wheel and I paid, uh, I'm going to say it was about 15 to $20 for each one of these pairs of pliers. Well, I get about a week's worth of use out of them before I have to grind them again. And so if I ground every single one of my pliers, or if I repurchased another set of pliers every time my pliers started failing on me, getting all beat up on the ends and unable to actually hold a ring, which again, I weave enough that it becomes rather frequent, um, I would have paid for a grinder. Oh, I'm trying to get this. There we go. I would have paid for a grinder in the first week of having to purchase new new pliers and so by being able to modify these pliers i can just keep them sharp i can keep them tuned up you know you got to think of these your pliers like a pair of scissors or a knife if you're a chef you know um as you're using your your knife daily it gets dull you need to sharpen them well that's the same situation with your pliers you need to sharpen them you need to keep them tuned up so that they uh they function properly they make your weaving efficient and successful. So it's really important that uh, you keep your, your pliers tuned up or you're going to end up buying new pliers or having really a difficult time weaving. And so I just recommend that uh, that even if you buy a lot of pliers and even if you want to and, and, and you still want to support and I totally support Zeron. I buy tools from them regularly and and I love their their pliers and I, and I definitely support them. I, I have other pliers, too. But um, I'm really just looking at uh, how I, I'm showing you guys how I modify the Zerons that I use. Um, I use them probably the most frequently. Um, they're relatively inexpensive, um, and and they last pretty quite a while. And I mean, like this plier here, it's got it's got a lot of life in it. The great thing about um, this type of plier. The more you grind it down, especially for, for what we're using it for as far as chain mail, um, if this one gets to the point where I can't really get those fine tips anymore, doesn't matter. I'll grind it off so it's more like this one, so it's got that real thick end. And then the actually the further down you get towards the base, towards the uh, bottom of the tip, down here, down here, the actual better those pliers will work for heavy gauge um, weaving because you have more torque um, with a plier uh, the shorter this tip is. So it actually, so there's there's so much life left in this, this set of pliers. I mean, I could use these probably for another, I don't know, a couple years and I'll just keep grinding further and further down and then reshaping this outer part. And I do that, as you can see, um, not so well on these, this pair, but obviously on this pair, you can see that I actually grind those down quite a bit and reshape that the edges of the plier. And you can do that pretty infinitely until you get to, well, <laughs> infinitely, until you get to the point where there's no, there's no tip left. Um, you can you can still modify those quite a bit, and honestly, um, if one was to re-drill um, this point here and reattach those, you could actually probably get even more life out of them. I'm not that crazy, but um, it is it is possible. So uh, so let's just uh, let's now talk about. Um, so, so now that we know, you know, the value of being able to modify your modify your own tips, and how much you're going to save yourself by having a grinder like this, and it's not overly expensive. Like I said, 50, 60 bucks. I mean, you can get a, you can probably get a much nicer one for a bit more expensive, but you can still do quite a bit with this guy. And I mean, I use this uh, pretty pretty often. I even use it for grinding some of my uh, ring tips down uh, if I want to modify a a certain um, if I'm going to like weld a ring and I need to get those tips really, the, the butt ends really um, flushed up, I'll sometimes come in here and use this and grind it down and, and make that uh, so it's a nice 
a nice tight fit. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the, uh, over the grinder on. Um, I guess we'll see. But we're going to start out, and I'm just going to show you real quickly how to do some of the grinding and tune-up on some of these. I'm going to start with these heavy duties, the ones that I use, and here I'll show you. I mean, these guys, I work in 14, sometimes 12 SWG. That's uh, standard wire gauge. Um, you can see that's a pretty thick, pretty thick wire um, that I that I weave these rings. And yes, I I weave 14 and 12 gauge rings with these guys. And then I also weave these little itty bitty. Let's see if I can grab one here. Oh, let's see if I can. <laughs> I guess I'm not going to grab one here. Yeah, let me use this other set of pliers here. Get that out of there. Okay. Oh. Looks like I definitely need to tune up these pliers. It's a good thing we're doing this right now. Okay. All right, let's get it out of there. All right. So, this guy right here is... You see that little teeny tiny thing. Okay, so this is, let me, let me do a comparison here. And so this is the difference. I've got a 14. Oh, let's get that into focus. See if we can get that into focus. 14 SWG and a 20, right here, this little tiny guy is a 20 AWG ring, three, 330 seconds. And so you can see the difference by modifying this exact same set of pliers. These are all the same same pliers. By modifying those, I'm able to weave this, you know, and I actually weave down to 24, even 26 AWG. And like I said, even up to 12 SWG. Uh, so consider a, quite a bit smaller than this guy here. And quite a bit larger than this guy here. So still using the exact same pliers. Now that puts a lot of torque on this on the Xerons. And they're not generally made for that, but they do it. And I just want to make you know, stress that point that these pliers are that good. They're capable of working in those ranges. Even though they're not necessarily meant for it. A little bit of modification, you can do it. Alright, so let's look at what I do to tune up these the the ones that I use for the larger gauge first off I will let's turn this on and I'm going to turn this on and I just come in here and try to make sure that I'm nice and flat and nice and perpendicular to the grinding wheel and what I want to do is I just I don't want to go fast I just want to kind of little bit little bit little bit little bites here and there and I want to take a look at them and make sure that we get the deformation that was on that tip fixed. That's most important. So that when they when you look at them end to end like this, let's see if we can get it here. There we go. Uh, oh, yeah, let's get back there. So when you're looking at it, you can see that there's, what we wanna do is make sure that there's no gap between the two tips. So, looks like there's still a little bit left there, so I'm gonna hit that again. Let's get that a nice. So what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna just like slam these in here and just grind grind them really hard. Um, because what that'll do is uh, heat up the metal and that actually weakens the metal. If you just go really slow, um, you don't have to harden these again. You don't have to um, quench them or, or uh, get them hot and, and quench, you know, Get those uh you can get these pretty well tuned up without getting them too hot and making them and annealing them and we don't want to anneal these otherwise you're gonna have to do a whole no you're gonna have to harden them with a whole nother process and so then i come in on the side here and just kind of clean up the uh the sides and then that makes those real nice even for weaving and I just a little bit i don't i just want to tune those up 
And then that is, well, that is looking, I'm gonna turn this off so I don't end up grinding myself because that would not feel good. Um, but you can see now that, oh, let's get those into focus. Look at how tight that is. See where that, those come together. So then what I'm gonna do, and I forgot to grab my sandpaper. I use some really, really fine, and this is um, P1200, 1200 grit sandpaper. And see if I can get this in here. And what I do is I take these like this. I'm gonna just push this back for a second. And so I take these and I open the 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 uh, the mouth of the pliers just enough so that I can slide it back and forth at a little bit of an angle. And so what that's gonna do, I'm gonna go both directions. What that's gonna do is just soften those edges just enough so that I don't leave marks in my rings and I don't have a real sharp edge there, but it's still nice and clean. And then I'll take and hit the, hit the tips just a bit. So I take any sharpness off of there, any real sharpness, so I don't cut myself. And um, as any mailer knows, uh, we have a high propensity to stabbing ourselves with our pliers, especially when we're working in really tight stuff. And that just isn't fun. And if you uh, have a real sharp set of pliers that you just freshly ground, um, that's not going to feel good. So you just want to clean those up a little bit. And so now those are nice, not too, not sharp but they've got these really clean edges and that's gonna be great for for um, for weaving. So let's go ahead and bring this guy back in here again. And I'm gonna show you what I do. This one's gonna be a little bit more difficult. I think I'm gonna have to adjust my camera for this one. So I'm gonna bring it over to this side. And so I'm gonna show you what I do here for modifying um, this type of plier and where I want to get that nice, clean, um, chiseled tip. See if I can get a good... There we go. You can see where there's some a lot of deformation on there. So I want to get that cleaned up. And so that's going to be really easy. Oh, there we go. You can see how deformed that is um, on the tip there. And what we need to do is we need to grind that. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna get that tip down to where I'm into good material. So I'm gonna just take a little bit. Uh, what I do is I so I come back in here just like I did the other pair and get those nice and flat looking. We wanna come in really perpendicular to the grinding wheel so you gotta tip down just a little bit. And we just wanna hit it, bop, 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 just like that. Just like, we don't wanna get it hot. We just wanna take a little bit of that tip off. So let's look at that. Now, it's very possible that um, that tip isn't, uh, isn't too fat now. It doesn't, you know, it's not too thick. And uh, I might just leave it. I might just call that a done. Because um, it's still pretty close to a good chisel. But I might want to take that down just a little bit more. But I mean, look at that. That's already looking way cleaner. Um, but if not, what I want to do then is come in and get this nice and flat in here. And again, you want to try to make sure that you're keeping perpendicular to the grinding wheel. What we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to hit this just like this. Nice and clean. And then we're just going to flatten that out a little bit. And it looks like I got a little, need to tip it up a little bit more. We're just going to come in just like this. We're setting, oh, sorry about that. We're setting right on the guard. Well, we're not flipping rings, but we're flipping cameras. <laughs> yeah, that's why we call it ring flips, but all right. Let's get this adjusted back here a little bit better. Okay, so we come in here, and again, we want to try to stay nice and perpendicular to that grinding wheel, keep it nice and flat, and then really slowly, and so you can see here that I've got a nice flat clean um, grind on that and look at how nice let's see look at how nice look at how nice that tip is look at the top portion 
The one on the top is just nice, clean, chiseled. And so I'm gonna do that to the other side. Get nice and tight in here. We're gonna grind that sucker. Just enough to get that nice chisel. And keeping it perpendicular, nice and flat up against that. And so look at that. This is that is what we call consider a successful grind. Now, generally I don't like to have a super sharp chisel on these, mainly because it really makes the tips really weak. <clears throat> and generally I don't need anything really that chiseled. And so I'll come back in here and just kind of tap it. Nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. And then so there is a beautiful ready to go set of pliers chisel tip pliers for weaving 24 AWG 20 AWG you can even weave up to maybe even 18 SWG with these <coughs> fairly fairly successful so now of course what we want to do is we want to make sure we go get back to our metal sanding paper and we want to go ahead and clean these guys up real quick because we don't want any sharp edges oh and there we go again Losing the camera. Let's get that set right. Okay, here we go. And here we go. Get this. Um, just want to get that nice and clean on the edges. And then we want to take anywhere we've anywhere we've ground the the head of the plier tip. Anywhere we've ground that tip plier plier tip of the plier. Ah, I know I'd get it out one of these days. Um, and just take any of that real sharpness out because, man, these are, these are brutal when you, when you get stabbed with a set of these. It's not fun. So we want to make sure that we make them a little dull. And uh, I'm going to run this back through here again real quick. And this, uh, this piece of sandpaper I've used, um, I've used this probably, I don't know, 100 times. And it's still pretty good. I mean, there's still quite a bit of life left in it um, you know you're not really it's not like you're really sanding a lot you're just trying to get that little sh the sharpness just any burrs any little any little spots that might be a little rough to the hands and to those rings and it's really about those rings we don't want to create a bunch of marks in the rings um, so anyway so that's uh, that's how I modify this set for a nice chiseled tip and uh, so that's a really, that now is a really good set of pliers uh, for working in some really low gauges. Look at the end of that. Let's open, let's see if I can get a good end. There we go. Oh, there we go. So you can see that closes nice and tight. And they're really well aligned. That's perfect. Now, if I want to um, create that bevel, you see this bevel on top here? Actually, I'll show you what I do to get that bevel there. This is really kind of simple. So we'll bring this guy back into position. And go ahead and put this like so. Okay, get that back into position here. Okay. I think that's a good view of that let's see i wonder if come in from the side a little bit so you can see yeah let's do this that should work okay so what i do um to get that this this bevel this okay focus on the plier there it is see that bevel the bevel on the side here to get that. There it is. I'll show you what I do. Turn this guy back on. And what I do is I lay the pliers. Let's see, let's pull this back just a little bit so you can see this. So I lay the pliers directly onto this table. This it's a this guard or this fence. I set this right on top of there and I close them and then I lay those down up at the top here 
and I just gently let that and I just tap them. What I'm trying to do is not let those get hot. If you grind too fast and too hard, then you uh, you soften the tip and uh, it makes them really weak. And so this will keep them from getting too soft and be basically what you're doing is you grind them too hot, they anneal, and they become soft. And that's definitely not what we want. And then I can touch the other side up a little bit too, just to clean those up. And just depending on how sharp of an of an angle you want is how far you come down this. You know, you can come like this, you're gonna have a really sharp angle. If you go way up high, you can get this really long tip. I'm gonna like it kind of right about here. And it just gives you a nice clean nice clean tip so now you can see where I've just kind of tuned that up a little bit and that's how you get that and then I've got this other set of pliers now this one is modified for getting into really really tight spots so you can see I've curved it in on this side and then it's beveled on this side on this side <clears throat> And so the way I do that is actually run those in at an angle on the side of the grinding wheel. Let me see if I can do it on this side so you can see it better. Yeah. And so I use this piece right here to cut that groove. And then I come back in up here on the back side where I've just got it beveled. I've just got it beveled there. Uh, okay. Come on, camera. Focus on the pliers. There it is. Um, on the back side there where you can see that it's beveled. That I just uh, I just do the same way I did those previous set. I just clean those up like that. And then again, the sides, I'll do the same thing. I'll just grind the edges this way and this way, perpendicular. And that tunes that all up. And then this set is really good for low low really low gauge um really low ar um, weaving where in your when you're in a position where you're trying to weave um weave something that's really tight kind of in a really hard to get spot <clears throat> these are really good for that so um this is this is kind of what i do for tuning up my pliers and if you can do this um like i said you can save yourself a lot of money and um and always have really good tuned up tools for the work you're doing. And that's really important. Uh, if you want to, you know, if you're, if this is a business, uh, you want to make money, um, or, or if you just want to be efficient with your time, um, spending a few minutes grinding these tools, getting them cleaned up, getting them tuned up makes, uh, makes weaving just so much easier, so much less frustrating. Cause I know, and I'm sure anyone who's, you know, who's watching this video, Who's ever worked with a, a crappy pair of pliers will definitely attest to how difficult and frustrating it is to work with them um, and how much nicer it is to have a good tuned up set of pliers that are that are um, ready to go um, everybody I mean <laughs> I know for me personally having an, a brand new set of pliers to start weaving with um, is, is so nice because they're usually pretty tuned up, ready to go, um, and and you don't have a lot of those slips. And as they start to wear in, you start getting slips, and you start having difficulties holding your rings, and and you start marring because you're <clears throat> squeezing your pliers so hard to make sure that you're not losing your ring. And if you don't have to do that when your your pliers are tuned up and sharp, um, and and kept at a at a uh, at a real um, uh, tuned up finish or tuned up, um, yeah, finish, I guess. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Um, like, and subscribe to see more of our videos. Uh, you can also find our, uh, written tutorials at Etsy on Etsy, excuse me, at Brilliant Skulls course we are brilliant twisted skulls but uh you'll find 
um, our tutorials, our written tutorials on Etsy at Brilliant Skulls. Um, you can also follow us at Brilliant Twisted Skulls on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Uh, and you can find all those links and, and uh, descriptions in the description, or yes, in the description below. Uh, thanks again for watching.